What's up everybody? This is another quick how-to in Unreal Engine 4. Today I want to talk a little bit about, bit about how to keep your code a little bit cleaner when you're working in blueprints. Um, this is not, this is from personal experience. So here I have a pretty bad example. This is some of the stuff you can wind, you can find yourself doing if you're not keeping it clean the whole time. This was from a game jam, I don't know, six or eight months ago or something like that. And it's all snarled in here. And you think that's bad, and then you pull out, and it's just a nightmare. And at least I put comments in. Although some of the comments just say comment. So I don't know what this does anymore. And I don't really think I could figure it out if I tried. So today I'm not going to be working out of this. I just wanted to use this as an example of what can happen if you're not doing code cleanup as you go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump out of this back into our little how-to example here and open up our thing doer, trusty thing doer. And I've set up a little bit of a messy scenario here. It's not too bad though, so we should be able to untangle this. So the first thing I want to say is out of your event graph here, as much as possible, um, if you find yourself having more than two or three nodes, you should probably be putting it in a function. Um, you're doing something with those two or three nodes and you have some idea that you're trying to accomplish. So that's probably a function that can be named. What is it that you're trying to do? So up here, what are we doing? Okay, so we're, this was from our Enum uh, how-to a while back. We're setting the player status to, it looks like a random Enum off of this Enum. So let's call all of this uh, set random player status. And so what you can do is you can take all these nodes and you can work in the event graph, but then take the nodes and right click and hit collapse to function. And then let's go ahead and rename this function set random player status. There we go. So now all of that's in there and this is way cleaner up here. So we know that event begin play, then we're going to set a random player status. And we don't really need to know how we do that unless we're changing the way that it works or if we find a bug or something like that. And uh, what are we doing here? Well, this is a bunch of garbage. This is not, I mean, it's obviously warning me, uh, which is why if I compile, it's giving me warnings. I just added a bunch of nodes to make it look a little bit messier. But I've got overlapping wires here. So the first thing, let's go ahead and let's get them into functions. And that'll help us see the boundaries uh, between... Oh, no. The boundaries between what's going on down here and what's going on up there. So this is part of this. So that's the first thing I'd say is turn everything into functions. And this is, we'll say it's every event, so we'll say event uh, delegate on player status. Let's take all of this and we'll collapse it to a function. And we'll call this function event delegate on player status. So now we know this is for the event tick, because we might have different functionality for using a switch somewhere else. We don't want to necessarily reuse this on event begin play or something like that. Um, well, I should probably call it event tick. Okay. And then this last bit here is just doing something that I have no idea what it's doing. So we'll just call this some function. Collapse function. Some function. That's all just garbage code again. And you notice it automatically sets up your inputs because I need an input from this. Um, and here's the other thing is now it looks like we have a ton of inputs. We'll revisit that in just a half second here. Um, so now I'm going to show you some tricks to keep uh, the actual nodes clean and organized within functions. So now if you look at your event graph, super easy to tell what's going on. If I on component hit, so when this gets hit, it does this function. And maybe there's multiple functions that get called. So that one of the first things I'll say is, instead of out of this, just at stringing things together, add sequences. Sequences first do this, they execute this, and then whenever this hits the end of the line, it executes this. And this is a good way to keep clean uh, all of the different things that need to happen. So I'd usually line that up like that. And then I would have some other function here. Um, yeah, some function. Some other function. I don't know. Um, but I'll do that now. All right, let's go ahead and jump into here. Another good thing to know about is um, the alignment tools. 
So if you right click, you can go to the alignment drop down here and you can straighten this connection. And then we can lift this up. And we can do the same thing for all of these connections. Alignment, straighten connection, and lift this up. Let's go ahead and grab that. Alignment, straighten connection, and we can lift all this up. And this is just to help visually make it easier to see all of the threads that are going on. If, there, if you have uh, curving cords, it just makes it a little bit harder to track what's going on. The other thing I would do then is uh, vertically align each stack. Since these are um, parallel, you know, they might be a little bit different when it comes to what actually happens, but you have roughly the same sequence of types of things going on here. So you can go ahead and line all these up Oops. vertically. And again, that's just going to help you um, visually see. Now, I don't always do all this. I'm not going to do those because I'm going to show you something else in a second here. I don't always do all this. Uh, in fact, most of the time I don't do all of this. But these are definitely some things that I found are helpful um, to me when I am getting to the point where it's getting messy and I'm having a hard time keeping track of what's going on. Okay, so now we've got these, very, these four very different paths, but they're all very clear which path is being taken, except for we've got all of these. And I could just line these up, but another uh, good trick to know is instead of calling the variable four times and just adding that many more words, you can I'll go ahead and delete all of these out. You can add some reroute nodes. A reroute node helps, so instead of doing this, where we've got all of these long wires coming out, I can take this add a Node. And that just makes another node uh, that is coming out of this. So you can do that and then route node. And this is probably not the best time to use a reroute node, come to think of it. But it's a good place to show that they exist. Uh, and then you can go ahead and plug them in. You can move them, it's a little bit tricky to move them. Plug them into each spot and then line them up. Yeah, there we go. And again, this is probably not the, the best place to have done this. I can I can do this. And actually I'll I'll add a reroute node up here. Just to get this one on par with the other ones. Yeah, so I can do this now. Um and I could, I could probably, I could probably move all of these nodes up and then align them as well. Did that align? Yeah, it did align. Just it didn't look like it aligned. So now you can see that they're all calling self, and they all have the same uh, injection to these. Uh, what am I doing? Casting to player state. I don't know what that's for. Um, so that's one thing. That's another cool thing you can do, and you can do reroute nodes out of these too. So if you need to have a bunch of things coming out of uh, eliminated, I would, first of all, I would say to use a sequence, but if uh, if that is becoming a, a problem because you've got a sequence with too many nodes and you're, you've got code all the way down to here and your last node just isn't connecting straight up like this, you can reroute these as well. So that can help you move these wires around to get a m more clean looking path if you need to do that. The other thing I will say, and I think this is probably the most important, so I left it for last, is to comment what you're doing. So if you just loop around everything and you hit C, you can say, this does leave as many notes as you can. Um, this does functionality is great. Um, if it's really self-explanatory, you know, this is four nodes, it's obviously doing some functionality. Um, you can leave comments in comments. So if there's something different about, um, so I'll edit this, depending on player status, even better, that's saying depending on player status. Okay, yeah, now I see, I see this is coming out of player status. Oh, and actually now that I think about it, this comment should probably go over this. And what's nice is that once everything's in a comment, if you move this around, everything inside it moves. Um, you can leave comments in comments. So let's go ahead and select all of these and type C. And this is something 
different captains here than the rest. Okay, so now I've got you know this little note to whoever might see this next, or myself, but I'm probably the one seeing it next. Um, that something a little bit different is happening on uh, that top path. So I should pay special attention to what's going on there. Um, if you find that you have more than three or four nodes in a uh, comment and uh, you have multiples of those, then you might want to think you might want to think about putting everything that's in the these comments. Um, oops, my comment inside a comment is not coming along. It should there you go? That's how it's supposed to work. Um, yeah, so if I had multiple boxes with this many nodes in it, I would think about changing these to functions. Now, this is the only one, and if I were to change it to a function, it would just be a function inside a function inside a function. There's no reason to do that. Um, but you can absolutely call functions from within other functions. The only downside to, the only time when you really can't do that is timelines. Some, for some reason, you can only add them to the, um, to the, event graph. So that's some tips and tricks. If you look at your event graph now, it's all cleaned up. And then you need to go in. So that one's cleaned up. Some function is not cleaned up. I would add some. These all come out of the same thing. So they're all the same input. So I would I would probably eliminate these inputs and add reroute nodes. So this is reroute node to you. And this ends up going actually to here as well. And is that it? And here as well. And then I would go to the function and I would eliminate all of these extra inputs. There's just no need for all of that. That just confuses it. So I would use with reroute nodes, I would clean this up a little bit and I would align these. Um, put comments around what what is this if doing? You can put small comments. You can just say, you know, just around these two, be like, see if blah, then blah. And then you can have, okay, well, the blah is up here. Blah. So that's doing blah. And then up here you might say otherwise bleh. There you go. Bleh. There you go. So now you've got this clear, you can follow the path, you're like, okay, I'm gonna cast. And then when we get here, we're gonna do oh if it's blah then or if it if well, I shouldn't just say if blah, I should have said if foo or something. Foo, then blah. Okay, so we know if some condition's true, and I've described the condition here, so I don't need to look back. Then, it's, then we're going to do blah, and maybe that's all I need to know. I don't even need to look at this, but if I need to know what's happening in blah, I can look in this comment box and know that that's the extent of it. I hope that was helpful. This was a little bit longer than I intended it to be, so maybe I'll cut this down a little bit, but I hope it was helpful, and I uh, will see you guys next time. Thanks.